What's up, Claw Crew? Welcome back to my channel. Today we have a Watch Me Work where you'll get to see me create these beautiful nails from start to finish. I am absolutely in love with this color combination, so stay tuned and enjoy. So first we're going to go in with this drill bit and remove her previous design which was inspired by at g4l nails on instagram because the new design that we're going to do today will use the same base acrylic i'm only going to remove the gel polish from the top i'm not going to debulk the nail or anything like that because we're just going to do a simple fill and then design on top again with gel polish So as you can see, we do have two repairs that we're going to have to take care of today. She's going on four weeks of wear and tear with these nails. Um, and the ring finger she hit and it lifted up pretty bad. So I advised her to cut it as low as she could until she could get to me. So we're going to take care of that today as well. So we saved this nail for last because it is still pretty tender. Um, as you can see, I'm using my thumb to hold the base of it down um, because it is hanging on by literally just a, a small piece, but I do not like to just yank nails off. So I want to thin it out as low as possible so that we could safely remove it uh, without damaging her nail bed. Also, the pink that you're starting to see at the tip of the nail is acrylic from a previous nail design that is not her nail bed. Once we took care of that nail, we went ahead and proceeded with the normal process. So now I'm pushing back the cuticles on each of her fingers. Next, I'm going in with a medium grit zebra sanding band from Panna uh, just to remove the shine from her natural nails and clean up any extra cuticle that is left on the nail plate. And then I'm also going to go over the actual um, acrylic just to smooth it out and make sure that it's ready for application of our fill. I also like to use this sanding band to go around the edges of the previous product just to make sure that the nail is flush. I don't want anything that could possibly be starting to lift or any uh, leftover top coat or anything like that that will interfere with the adhesion of the filling that we're going to do today. I also like to take the sanding band to go along the sides of the nail um, just to make sure that we don't have any bulkiness there from where the nail grew out and just clean up the shape of the nail in general to help us achieve that crispy shape in the end.
next I'm going in with my 80 100 grit files um, these are not my favorite files I must admit uh, I tried something new from the local nail supply store and I mean they get the job done but they're not my favorites um, I'm going along the sides just to clean that shape up and then in a minute you'll see me turn the hand around to uh, get the tips nice and crispy that's what works for me personally to make sure that the tips are straight and not leaning or slanted in any way also uh, I will reshape again after application this just helps to make sure that um, I don't have to do a whole lot of debulking or reshaping at the end it should just be a nice cleanup and then we can start with our design Be sure that when you're filing in this angle that you do support the nail and the fingernail uh, just by pinching it in between your two fingers while you file back and forth just to protect them from those vibrations. So after this I did go ahead and file the other hand um, off camera and so now we're skipping straight to the prep. Here I'm applying the chisel bonder. Uh, as the dehydrator and then I'm going in with my Young Nails Protein Bond and I'm going to do two coats of that before I apply the acrylic. And now for the application, I'm going to start by placing my bead a little bit away from the cuticle and give it a few seconds to set and then I'm going to push it up towards the cuticle. That allows me to get that flush look without having a runny um, product run into the cuticle and flood the cuticles. That will lead to lifting, um, especially if you don't clean it up properly in time. And I'm not going to swipe that all the way down because I want that to be where the apex is. So I placed my second bead a little bit below that and then blended it with the first bead. And as you can see, that's how I got that nice smooth transition for my apex. Now I'm just going in to make sure that my color is solid all the way around, filling in any patches or any uneven spaces. And we're gonna do the same thing here. We're gonna place our bead a little bit away from the cuticle, push it back to get that flush look, wipe my sides to keep my sidewalls clear. And as you can see, I'm still not touching that middle portion yet. And then I'm gonna start patting it down to make my apex. I do wanna to mention to make sure you're cleaning your brush often during this process. If you start to have acrylic uh, get stuck in your bristles, then it's gonna mess up your application. And then you also don't wanna run the risk of messing up your brush in the long run. So if you do start to feel that sticky um, application, then make sure you're cleaning it in your monomer and then on your paper towel. You will notice I pay a lot of attention to my sidewalls during application. That's because I really want to keep the shape that I achieved prior to application um, throughout the process. So if I pay attention to that while I'm applying my acrylic, then I'll have less work to do in the end, which will save me on time and it'll save my wrist as well.
So here I'm prepping the other hand now. I like to do my prep one hand at a time, simply because as much as we would love our clients to sit still, um, oftentimes they move, they touch their phone, they might have to grab something out of their purse or something. And so then they end up with lint or oils or anything like that back on their hand. And then we have to redo the prep process anyway. So in order to prevent having to do the same steps multiple times, I just save each hand for when I'm actually gonna start working on it. So we realized we wanted to add some glitter to this so we're turning this pinky nail into a full glitter nail using a custom glitter mixed with clear acrylic. This glitter is called Peach Smoothie by Profiles Backstage. I absolutely love this glitter. I think it's so pretty.
Once our glitter has been capped in clear acrylic, we're gonna go in with our medium grit sanding band, still from Panna, um, just to smooth it out for our gel polish application. I really don't use a lot of different drill bits just because most of the time my sanding band can get it done. When I have a lot of product to debulk, you will see me switch from the sanding band to another drill bit, um, typically one that's coarse that can help remove that product a lot faster. But for fill-ins, most of the time I usually rely on the sanding band to get my finished filing done. Now that my finished fouling is done, I'm going in with my Blossom Gel, which is a blooming gel from iGel, to prepare for my marble designs. I do have a more detailed and slowed down tutorial of my marble technique that's already up on my channel. I'll be sure to le link that video in the description box below, um, but I am still using that technique of picking up a few different colors at one time and applying it on top of the blooming gel. Make sure that before you put it into the light to cure that you do um, wipe the side walls. You want to make sure that you keep your shape nice and crispy and gel polish has a tendency to dull that shape out if you don't wipe those side walls before curing. With this design I laid a layer of blooming gel as my base and then I used my dotting tool to place the dots on top. I let it expand and then cure. And lastly, I'm going into top coat. Again, make sure that you wipe those side walls of the top coat before you put it in the light to cure. You want to make sure that you're doing everything you can to keep your shape nice and crisp, especially if your client doesn't want a rounded or square round nail. This was supposed to be our last step. However, we decided we wanted to add some bling, but we had already stopped recording at that point and we forgot to turn the camera back on. So we do not have footage of that, but you will see the bling that we did um, in the final pictures at the end.
And here is our finished product. Check out that bling at the cuticles, those marbles, the ombre, beautiful. Thank you for tuning in. Hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and drop a comment below.